Well, today we mourn the loss of 41-year-old GOP Congressman-elect Luke Letlow, who passed away last night due to COVID-related complications. While heartfelt condolences are pouring in from all sides, some saw a vile opportunity to take jabs at the late father of two. Liberal hack Aaron Rupar tweeted out a month-old video of Letlow calling for us to reopen our economy, to balance the economy against fighting this pandemic. Rupar quipped, Congressman Letlow died of COVID-19, a tragedy. After facing a wave of backlash, by the way, he doubled down, adding, I mean it sincerely, Letlow's death is tragic. It was also avoidable. It shouldn't take tragedies for policymakers to treat the coronavirus pandemic with the seriousness it deserves. Here now, Ali Beth Stuckey, host of the Relatable Podcast. Ali, I don't even know what question to ask you. I don't know how one decent, sane person responds to this type of response to a death from a journalist. Right. Unfortunately, some people see all tragedy as an opportunity to push some kind of agenda, or maybe it's even more superficial than that. Maybe it's just to get clicks and, and retweets, and you kind of wonder about the callousness of someone's heart and where we are as a country when we're simultaneously talking, or some people are talking about healing and reconciliation and unity and coming together, when we have some people, certainly not the majority, but some people who are unable to even show an ounce of compassion when someone on the other side of the aisle dies. And we can move past the kind of unscientific, I think, um, aspects of some of their messaging that, okay, he was against lockdowns, he was maybe against mask mandates, or some people were, so that means that he was okay with coronavirus and that therefore he deserved to die. And simply look at this also as, as a moral issue. Not only are their uh, assessments inaccurate, but they're also cruel. If we are unable to just for one second take a step back and say, okay, you're a human being. You have two little kids. You have a wife that you're leaving behind. I mourn the loss of your life. And then you can get back to, you know, uh, your, your regularly scheduled crazy leftist tweets. That's fine. But let's take a break for one second, especially after this year and say, okay, this is, this is a human being made in the image of God. His life mattered. You know, Ellie, but I don't know that you can separate the inaccuracy from the morality. I really like your point. And by the way, we should point out that Rupar wasn't alone. There were several other journalists out there dancing yeah. on his grave, in essence, making their points. What I'm talking about not being able to separate the inaccuracy from the morality is this. You point out, this doesn't necessarily follow science. Lockdowns don't follow science. Right. Most of the conversations we've had at this point have divorced themselves from science. These this hectoring, this 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 um, mandating over and over, it's become yeah. so many people's form of morality. That's what I'm getting at. It's their right. way of being virtuous yeah. by showing they're better than somebody else, even if somebody died. Oh, yes, that's a very good point. Some people have obtained this false sense of self-righteousness by saying, okay, I'm going to be as pro-lockdown as I possibly can. I'm for the government taking away every form of income for the working class, and that makes me uh, scientific. That makes me reasonable and compassionate. Meanwhile, they're showing cruelty towards people who disagree with them or cruelty towards people who get sick and die. We saw the same thing, unfortunately, when Herman Cain died of, of coronavirus. And you're absolutely right. It's become this self-righteous religion of scientism, I like to call it, um, of some people who don't really care about the data, who don't care about the fact that lockdowns obviously aren't working in places like New York and Oregon and, and California. Uh, they have just said, these are the talking points that I have to say. This is the position that I have to hold, and that makes me righteous. M meanwhile, they might still be making money working from home as some freelance blogger for the past 10 months, but other people have to live their lives. Like, people have financial, physical, spiritual needs, and you're absolutely right. Um, it is immoral and inaccurate to castigate people who have different views on this, and especially to gloat over them if they get sick or die. I think that's right. Really good stuff, Allie. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. All right. So